Hey you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Kasturi and you're watching Musk on the Moon. So tell me, what are the two most valuable assets of your life? Comment down below with your answers. For me, it's my time and energy. But on the contrary, till last month, I used to spend most of my time on social media, gadgets, TV, scrolling through my phone mindlessly till the time I get tired and realize the day is gone and it's time to sleep. And then I spend the rest of my time sleeping only to gain back my energy so that I can spend that gained energy and time on my digital world once again. Now this can't be just my story guys. Please back me up here. I'm sure you can connect with this. It's not like I don't know that. Social media gives me anxiety. Scrolling mindlessly keeps me overwhelmed. Watching stupid movies is just a waste of my time. But I still do all of that. And I have experimented a lot with my habits. Creating new habits to keep my mental health in check. Trying to spend more of my time mindfully away from digital world and close to the real world. But sometimes I just can't do it anymore. I mean, keeping up with habits is difficult, right? And especially the healthy ones. I feel the need to check my phone, even there is nothing to check. Is this addiction? Well, definitely yes. I have talked about limiting social media and coming out of our digital world and I have practiced the same myself for a good amount of time. But there is always something that pulls me back and keeps me off track. And then I thought, why not to take it to the next level and visualize my mental space in a way that it makes me realize and forces me to think that how much good or bad my daily consumption of social media and digital clutter affects me and how I can maybe put it down to words and compile a stepwise method that helps me to minimize my connection with digital world for good so I can spend my time doing things I otherwise wish to do. And voila! I came up with a method and the one rule I stick with which has changed a lot of things for me. And I just couldn't wait to share it with you guys and I truly hope this helps you with your digital overconsumption situation. If you don't like to watch a video, you can go ahead and read my blog on my website maskonthemove.com. The link will be in the description down below. I have uh, put together this whole video in the blog as well. So simply put, digital minimalism is a philosophy that helps you question what gadgets, digital communication tools add most value to your life. And what are the things that you can cut down or replace with better ones that help you to achieve more and optimize your digital world. You practice digital minimalism when you take a more intentional approach while consuming media, gadgets and at least try to minimize electronic waste as an individual. Now, this video is not about what digital minimalism is, so this is all what you get here. But I promise you, as you keep watching this video, it is going to get more interesting. So, coming to the one rule that I swear by is to act smart and buy electronics mindfully. Meaning, when I really need them. If they launch a new phone with some new feature, I ask myself, is this gadget for me? Is this gonna make any positive difference in my daily life? Does it keep the potential to improve my work or personal life in any way? If no, then I don't have any intentions to replace my existing devices. I choose to repair my gadgets first over going ahead and straight up buying a new one. For some reason, we tend to feel the need to buy the latest gadgets as soon as they arrive. Whether from breakdown, slowdown or just the availability of a newer model, people discard their old or existing electronics at the slightest inconvenience. But don't you think before another mindless purchase, we should think of the consequences? Comment below if you agree. Let's check out my three box method now. Let me explain this to you exactly how I visualized it in my head. Imagine it as you watch this video. It's like a box inside a box, which is inside a box. Hear me out. These three boxes represent my mental space. The first box is that part of my mental space that holds all the digital clutter for me. Unread emails, files, pictures, videos, docs, excel sheets, etc. So my first step is to declutter this box by deleting the unwanted or moving my docs and pictures and videos that I don't need on a daily basis on the cloud. Keeping only the files that I need or the apps that I use on a regular basis. I know we don't pay much attention to this that is why I made it the first step to see what happens. Think of it like this. 
If your work desk has like 100 files piled up, would you be able to work to your full potential? I don't think I'll be able to work at all unless I remove all those files from my physical space. Then why aren't we focusing and treating our mental space like that? Anyways, I was already spending so much time on my laptop and phone, so might as well give that time to declutter and gain some sense of achievement, right? This step helped me to reduce the stress and pressure of finding a particular file or a document I needed urgently for work. Not to mention it saved a lot of my time. Now that the first box is gone or decluttered, step two is to optimize my digital tools to save me more time for completing one task. For example, I write down ideas for my YouTube videos the moment it pops up in my head. Now if I'm out somewhere, I used to open my notes and write them down. And even though I have a dedicated note already filled with ideas, still I would go on and create a new one if I'm in a hurry or simply just can't find it in my digital clutter of notes. I had this weird habit of messaging those topics on my family group or a friend's chat on WhatsApp so that it remains on my chat with them as a note. And if I'm at work working on my laptop, I would quickly make a note on my desktop. You get my point? Everything was scattered in front of me and inside my mind. To locate or revisit my ideas, I had to go through a lot of places. Now, I have downloaded Trilo. I'm just giving you the easiest example. One app for all ideas, thoughts at one place. Another example. I realized that since I get distracted like a squirrel and eating almonds every day isn't helping anymore, after some research, I found an app that amazingly enough cuts down my distraction and increases my focus and concentration, especially when I'm writing something. It's called Brain FM. Quite an unusual name, but it works 100% for me. It has different music for your work mode. So when I'm working, I put headphones and just go for it. According to your work and daily routine, you can optimize your digital tools to work for you in favor of your productivity and not otherwise. Now let's assume that optimizing my personal space is now sorted and good to go to perform better, spending less time and energy, yielding me more work. Now I have decluttered, which was the first box, and optimized my tools, which was the second box. Now the third box is the step number three, which is minimizing my presence in the digital world. So I did time budgeting. I started tracking myself on this app called Loop Habit Tracker. Now I started setting reminders for myself. Some of you probably must be doing this already. Time I spend on social media, news, etc. I gave myself one whole hour of the day to explore social media. It spared plenty of time, but there's a big but here. At the same time, created that void and anxiety that left me thinking, what now? What do I do with my free time? So to fill that void, I started learning a new language on Duolingo. This way, I'm not detaching myself totally from my phone or my laptop. I'm taking my dose of dopamine in a different but rewarding manner. Our wavering minds are constantly craving for us to create new things and explore new things. I gave my mental space a lot of space and tried to fill it with something fresh and it took the transformation quite nicely, I would say. These habits led me to another very positive side effect. Which is, when I'm spending time with my family, I consciously leave my phone upstairs in my bedroom. Also, if I'm watching something, I make it a habit of keeping my phone away. Being at two devices at once is the worst thing we can do to our mental health. For example, scrolling through social media if a boring scene is on in a movie that you're watching. This rule of one screen at a time has increased my attention span and also I enjoy the movie more. Even if it is mind-numbingly boring, At least I'm present in that moment. We spend a lot of time on our digital world, which takes a toll on our mental health, if not consumed in a limit and in a mindful way. Our work, pleasure, pastime, even games, everything is now digital. I'm not saying it's bad, it connects all of us. After all, it's our best friend since we are spending most of our day around it. But it doesn't take time for this best friend to become our worst enemy if we don't take back control over our own time and energy. To recap, this was my three box method. Declutter was box one, optimize was box two, and minimize was box three. Do try it for achieving digital minimalism in your life and it works for you. Yay! Do let me know if you have any methods or solutions of your own. Do share it with me in the comments down below. 
all right happy minimizing guys and also i just wanted to mention all of these apps are 100% recommended by me because i've tried them and they are amazing they've helped me a lot so do try them and let me know how it helped in your minimizing process if you found this video valuable don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so that's all for today you guys thank you so much for joining me in this video and i'm going to see you in my next one bye